On June 27, 2014, a large lava flow broke out on the northeast side of Puuo'o and began to head east. It cut through miles of forest during the summer, and by October it was approaching Pahoa. A Pa'a road and the Pahoa transfer station were closed and emergency preparations began. With the lava burning through fields only a few hundred yards away, Helco workers hurried to protect power poles in its path. The poles were surrounded with insulation, cement blocks, and a big pile of cinder to keep the lava from burning the wooden poles. Lava ran directly into one of the power poles as it crossed the Pa'a Road in the early morning hours of October 25th. The power pole was completely surrounded but survived the intense heat of the flow. The protection worked. Below the road, the lava flow continued down through pasture, burning or burying fences and crumpling a metal shed along the way. The flows entered the top of the Sugimoto's property on October 28th and burned through their macadamia nut orchard. Listen for the methane blasts. These happen when gas from burning roots ignites and explodes. The lava burned things like this pile of old tires, but old trucks and pieces of metal got covered or embedded in the lava. Fire and civil defense workers were there to make sure everyone was safe. The lava flows start out only a few feet high, but over three days this lava inflated until it overflowed five foot high dirt walls. This sped up video shows how lava flows inflate like a balloon. The outside crust moves up as lava continues to fill the inside of the flow. Some flows can get pushed up to higher than the top of a school bus. The lower flows stop before they reach the village road or any homes in Pahoa. But on November 10th, a new flow broke out near Apa'a Road and moved toward an empty house. One branch of the flow moved along the road and into the driveway, and another flowed right up to the edge of the garage building, but stopped just a few feet away. Sadly, lava reached the house. All that is left is the metal roof on top of the lava, though the garage is still standing. New breakouts of lava continued above a pa'a and soon reached the transfer station. They first flowed around the dirt wall outside the fence and began to inflate. Then lava broke out, burned its way through the fence and flowed down the walls. The metal fence burns with a bright yellow flame anywhere the lava touches it. Even the rain can't put it out. When the lava reached the asphalt at the bottom, it began to burn too. Burning asphalt makes a nasty black smoke that is unhealthy to breathe. Other lobes of lava pushed through the fence and poured down the steep wall. When the cooling outer skin of the lava slows down, it folds into the rope-like shapes you'll see in the rock.
Lava knocked down a section of the fence and continued to fill the lower part of the transfer station. Firemen sprayed the protected power poles, hoping to keep them from being burned down as the lava approached the road. The lava flow crept along the outside of the fence, getting closer and closer to the road. Just when it appeared that the transfer station would be destroyed, the lava flows stopped. Though the outside is now cooled, the lava flows will remain hot inside for months. On a rainy day, you may see the steam rising.